Back in May of this year, Apple made the long-rumored move of killing the iPod line for good by discontinuing the iPod Touch. It was the last iPod model remaining in Apple's product portfolio following the 2017 discontinuation of the Nano and Shuffle, which followed the 2014 discontinuation of the hard drive-based classic that started it all. The recently discontinued Touch was in its seventh generation, which came out in 2019, and it was pretty much identical to its predecessor with a newer SoC, more RAM, and the addition of a 256 gig storage capacity being the only noteworthy changes. Likewise, the 6th generation Touch was a similar story, with it remaining largely the same as its predecessor on the outside, and most of its changes happening on the inside, which brings us to today's topic, the 5th generation iPod Touch. 10 years ago today, on October 11th, 2012, the 5th generation iPod Touch went on sale for the first time. Before I take a look at it, however, let me give you a little iPod history lesson so we can better put things into perspective. Back in the late 2000s, new generations of the iPod Touch were released annually following its debut in 2007, as consumer demand was high with sales peaking in 2009 and going on a constant decline thereafter. Apple released its last annual update to the Touch the following year in the form of its fourth generation. The first four generations of the iPod Touch were very similar to each other, with all of them featuring similar weights and dimensions, a stainless steel chassis, a glass-covered 3.5-inch LCD, and a single-core CPU paired with a fairly small amount of RAM. The fourth generation lost a bit of weight and brought cameras and a higher resolution display to the table, but it was otherwise more or less the same old thing with the usual spec bumps under the hood. After the entire iPod lineup saw no updates in 2011 aside from the addition of a white colorway for the Touch, the fully redesigned 5th generation Touch arrived alongside the 7th generation Nano in 2012. It was pretty much where the iPod peaked since most of the changes it brought stuck around until the very end of iPod production and sales. It was not only the most comprehensive update to the iPod Touch over the course of its nearly 15 year production run, but possibly the iPod line as a whole since its form factor, basic construction, and industrial design remained on the iPod by the time Apple decided that its time was up. The 5th gen ditched the steel chassis for a thinner, lighter anodized aluminum unibody that was available in a range of 6 colors at launch, most of which were offered with white bezels around its 4 inch 16x9 IPS LCD that replaced the TN panels used on its predecessors. The new, larger display had the same 1136x640 resolution as a then flagship iPhone 5, which translated into a pixel density of 326 ppi. It once again featured front and rear cameras, with one exception that I'll get into later, but this time with much better hardware that made them more usable in a wider range of situations than the ones on its predecessor. The front camera went from a 0.3 megapixel or VGA potato to a 1.2 megapixel unit that could record video at 720p 30 frames per second, while the 0.7 megapixel fixed focus rear shooter was dropped in favor of a far superior unit that packed autofocus, a 5 megapixel sensor, which Apple claimed was new for the 5th gen touch and not just recycled from the iPhone 4, an LED flash, and optics that were similar to those of the iPhone 5's rear camera. It was capable of recording video at 1080p 30 frames per second. This is actually a perfect segue into my next point about a feature or rather a gimmick that appeared on 5th gen and was never seen again in the rest of iPod history. Most 5th gen models, again more on this later, had a little metal circle on the back that's parallel to the rear camera, and this circle pops out when you push on it to form an anchor point for a wrist strap that Apple called the iPod Touch Loop. Every 5th gen touch equipped with this anchor, again more on this later, came with a loop that was color matched its chassis, while two packs of loops, one colored matched the iPod's chassis, and the other color matched the corresponding bezels were also sold separately at Apple stores and select retailers. Apple claimed this wrist strap was ideal for photography with the 5th gen touch since it was so thin and compact that it could have easily slipped out of the user's hand and fallen off a cliff or something during an iPod Touch photo session. However, it seems like there were fewer users using it than Apple had hoped because it might have stuck around for longer otherwise. 
Powering the 5th gen was the A5 SoC from the previous year's iPhone 4S, bringing a dual-core CPU to the iPod Touch for the first time and bumping its RAM up to a respectable 512MB. The more powerful SoC brought support for AirPlay mirroring and Siri to the iPod, but was still underclocked as with its predecessors. Of course, being a new mobile device from Apple in 2012, the 5th gen touch featured the lightning connector in place of the old 30 pin, and being one that came with earphones in the box, buyers were treated to a pair of wired earpods with their purchases. Now before I end this video, let me tell you about that exception that I mentioned earlier. When the 5th gen was first released a decade ago, it was only available in 32 and 64 gig capacities with the previous generation remaining in production with a lower capacity to serve as an entry level model. However, by May of the following year, the release of iOS 7 was imminent and the 4th gen simply wasn't capable of running it without becoming absolutely unusable so Apple decided to introduce an entry level 16 gig variant of the 5th gen. However, there were some catches. The mid-2013 16GB 5th Gen Touch was only available with a silver body and black bezels and it lacked both the rear camera and the wrist strap gimmick. This obviously didn't sit well with consumers as a little over a year later, Apple discontinued this version and introduced a new 16GB model that was otherwise identical to its higher capacity siblings. In summary, the 5th gen iPod Touch was probably one of the most important and influential Apple launches of 2012, possibly next to the iPad Mini and Retina MacBook Pro simply because it shaped the future of the iPod by being the beginning of the end. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and speaking of the original iPad Mini, you'll be seeing a video about that very soon as I'll be covering the 2012 iPads on their 10th anniversary next month. Until then, take care and have fun out there. Bye.